Welcome to this video on z-scores and how to use the z-score chart. First of all, it's good to know that a z-score is a measure of how many standard deviations you are from the mean. We'll see that in this chart. So this is the curve for the empirical rule, but it can also be used to show some common z-scores. So since the mean is the mean, you move zero standard deviations from it. So the mean has a z-score of zero always. Now over here as we follow, this was one standard deviation away. And if the z-score is how many standard deviations away from the mean you are, that means one. Here we're two standard deviations away. Here we are three. So everything to the right of the mean has a positive z-score. And everything to the left has a negative. So we have positives and negatives similar to a number line. Now these may not be the actual values of data, but the z-score tells you how many standard deviations you are from the mean. Okay? And it's good to remind you that when we use z-scores, these numbers here for the empirical rule are no longer in play. Okay? These are estimates. The z-scores are going to give us a much better value. So how do you find a z-score? Well, you need to figure out how far your data is from the mean, so data minus mean, and then you need to figure out how many standard deviations that is. So you would divide. So data minus mean divided by a standard deviation gives you the z-score. Okay. Here's an example. For a fitness test, everyone is asked to do as many push-ups as possible. The average number of push-ups completed was 12 with a standard deviation of 4. You need that information to calculate a z-score. So let's find the z-score for doing 10 push-ups. Okay? So this is your data value. So 10 minus 12 divided by 4 gives you negative 0.5. So that means you're half a standard deviation below the mean. So the z-score is negative 0.5. So what do you do with the z-score? Well, this is part of a z-score table. And there is a negative side here for z, and there's a positive side as well. Okay, You'll see the whole table. Okay, um, But over here you have to the tenths place on the left, and across the top you have the hundredths place. So here's an example of negative 2.94. Negative 2.94, and that's a z-score. What that tells you when you look it up in the table, it tells you the probability that you have of how much data you have below that z-score. Okay, 0 0.0016. And this table, any number inside the table, is always the amount of data to the left of what you're looking at. Okay, probability less than or the amount of data to the left. Always. Okay. So back to the push-up problem. We had a z-score of negative 0.5. So if you can look that up on your table, you'd be looking up negative 0.5 on the left and 0 0.00 across the top. But when you find it in the z-score table, you'll get 0 0.3085. That's inside the table. Okay. You'd find negative 0.5 on the edge and this number inside the table. So that means that the probability down here of someone doing less than 10 push-ups is 0 0.3085. That's about 30 or 31%. Okay. On the opposite end of the spectrum, this is a complement. So if it's not less than 10 push-ups, it's more. So you could subtract. So you could take away here the 0 0.305, which was less than 10 push-ups from 1, which is the total probability. And the probability of doing more than 10 push-ups is 0.6915, or 69%. Okay. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind here. Um, the z-score always gives you the amount to the left or less than. Okay. And from the last example, if you need to find the data or the probability greater than a value, you would be looking to the right, so you'd have to subtract what you get out of the table from 1. Okay. 
Okay, so if you want the right side of a graph, you have to subtract what comes out of the z-score table. Okay, here's a last example to go through. It says the mean distance for students driving to school is 15 miles with a standard deviation of 4 miles. Okay, and it has to find probability that a student drives between 10 and 22 miles. Okay, so that's how this reads percent of those traveling between 10 and 22 miles. So first of all, if you think about it, since the table only gives you the amount to the left, let's look up the 22. Okay. So we'll find the probability of being less than 22 miles, which means we need a z-score. So we use our z-score formula. We can use this notation to denote the z of 22. But it's 1.75. And if we look in the table, we'll get 0.9599. So there's 0.9599 chance that someone is traveling less than 22 miles to school. That's around 96% of people driving less than 22 miles. But less than 22 miles also includes less than 10 miles here. So we need to find the probability of driving less than 10 miles and take that out. So if we take 10 and we do the z-score of 10, remember that is less than the mean. It turns out to be negative 1.25. So then you look that up in the table, you'll get 0.1056. So this is the probability that uh, someone drives less than 10 miles to school. So we can take all that to the left of 22 and all that to the left of 10 and remove it. So this was 22 or less, this was 10 or less. If we subtract that, we'd get between 10 and 22, which is 0.8543. Okay. So it's good to note that if you ever have this in-between situation, you should only subtract probabilities. Okay. Never subtract z-scores and never subtract raw data. So don't subtract the negative 1.25 and the 1.75 from the previous page and don't subtract 10 and 22. That's not going to help you here. Um, sometimes you need to go the other direction. You can use a z-score uh, if you start with a percent. So here you see the average cost of a new car in a certain state is $45,000 with a standard deviation of 10000 it says find the z-score that represents the bottom 61% of car costs. I say the bottom because everything in the z-score table is less than. So first of all, keep in mind that 61% is a probability of 0.61. When we go to the z-score table, remember the inside of the table is the probability. Now here we don't have 0.61. The closest thing we have is 0.6103. Now, if we follow it to the edge, we can get the z-score of 0.28. Okay, so the z-score for what we're talking about is 0.28. Okay, now here's a formula for going um, to trying to get the data. Okay, so we've got a z-score now of 0.28. We had a standard deviation of uh, 10,000, and we had a mean of 45,000. So we can use this formula and plug everything in. And now that we have the z-score of 0.28, we can find out that uh, the actual average cost of car, excuse me, the bottom 61% of the cars is marked off at the 47,800 mark. Okay. And lastly here, you can find this in a separate file to print out. Uh, but in the middle here, we have raw data, z-score, and the percent probability which are the three things that are really worth using. You may be given the data score, or you may be given a z-score, or you may be given a probability as we just saw. This table will help you get to the other part. So if you're given a value and you want the uh, probability, you have to go through the z-score to get to the probability. If you were given the probability of percent and you wanted the actual value, you can follow along the bottom and it tells you how to get back to that actual value.